okay so today i was inspired to actually do a reflection video so we're going to be reflecting on meditation specifically because this morning i actually got a very interesting message that i'm going to get to just now but i first just want to reflect on meditation as a whole where i started why i started and how it's kind of evolved and what i've learned so i was always very hesitant at first with meditation because every time i tried to sit down and meditate my mind it was crazy like my anxiety at the time my i don't know my moods in general i suppose would shift a lot and so i would sit down for meditation and my anxiety would be there and then i'd get upset about it because then I'd be like, why can't I meditate? Like, I really want to meditate and I really want to be calm and I really want to be peaceful. And it's actually so funny to even think that I ever felt that way about meditation compared to where I am now. So I heard about meditation a lot and I heard about how it helps with anxiety and I heard how it helps with mindfulness. Even the idea of mindfulness, I was like, I don't see it. Like, like a year ago, two years ago, I would have been like, I don't, I don't get it. Mindfulness, whatever, just breathe don't get it what's the point we're already breathing right so I never really paid it attention until and like I really wish I took it seriously sooner but until Joe Dispenza okay so this book you're the placebo I chose this book completely randomly okay I was at the shops and I think I was waiting for Evan he was in the computer shop and I went to the bookshop randomly and I was at the time busy getting into my spiritual awakening at the time I had just started to like awaken slightly and I was in the bookshop and I was looking in the esoteric section and I saw the untethered soul which I had seen someone on YouTube speak about how it really impacted them spiritually and so that was the first book I saw the untethered soul if you haven't read it you must at some point read the untethered soul it's like it will break your brain open in terms of perspective like you'll be a new person after you read that book so i see the untethered soul and i was like and i wasn't expecting to see the untethered soul either but i took the untethered soul and then fairly close to it was this book you are the placebo and i was like hi huh, you're the placebo i've always been curious about the body's ability to heal so he discusses the placebo effect and his work is incredible. You need to read his books. You need to watch his show. It's so good. And so he discusses basically the brain waves and how everything works in terms of slowing down your brain waves to a certain level in meditation and how that creates coherence between your, your mind and your heart. And then you create from a different place and your body begins to heal. But he explains the whole thing in a lot more detail. My point here is meditation. So I read the book. It was incredible. The research that he's done is incredible. The work that he's done is incredible. And it just ties in with everything that I've been learning about energy, about vibration, about frequency, about manifestation. It just made sense. So I was like, I need to meditate. I need to get into meditation. And so I started off like with 10 minutes. And already in the first few times that I was trying meditation, I started to experience that place of complete stillness so I would sit down and I remember it was difficult because my thoughts were still very racy at the time but I would sit down and I would try to meditate and at the very beginning of practicing meditation my primary focus was to stop thinking and they say you shouldn't try to stop thinking entirely because you're going to think. But I was like, no, I'm going to stop thinking. I actually want to reach complete stillness. Like, And I didn't know what that felt like until I tried it and it worked. So when I tried it and it worked, I honestly, honestly swear it was like... I can't even explain how it felt. It was... It was beyond it was beyond bliss it was beyond peace it was beyond love it was like all of those things combined it was like ecstasy like a like the highest state i've never tried ecstasy but they say it's a feeling of ecstasy so that is how it felt it was like love bliss peace combined and i remember the first time i had that experience i i actually cried it was so beautiful 
And ever since then, I knew what that felt like and I knew I wanted to practice meditation more and that's when I really got into it. At the beginning of this year, I started consistently practicing every single day. I think until now, I've skipped maybe three days max, three, four days max, where I've missed a day that I haven't meditated at all. And when I really got into it, I started to reach that state of complete stillness, complete bliss, complete ecstasy, complete calm. And ever since then, I think I've been a changed person, like spiritually, like my life has changed, my anxiety has changed, my my mind, I feel like, has changed. Like my mind is not nearly as busy as it used to be. I don't overthink nearly as much as I used to. And so, if you do want to practice meditation, you're going to have to sit down and stop thinking and focus on your breath. And it's going to take a bit of time to practice, to train your mind, but that is what you're doing. Think of it as like an exercise, literally. You need to train your mind. You need to teach your mind how to be still. You need to teach your mind who's boss, basically, so that it doesn't run you but you run it, right? Because the mind is meant to be used as a tool, but we get victimized by our own minds because we are like, not here. Like we are programmed, conditioned, and everything we're thinking, it's not even really ours. Like we believe things that are not even true. Like we need to, like this is success and we need to achieve that to be successful. We need to achieve that to be happy. We believe it, people believe it. People are living their lives based on other people's standards of happiness. So anyways, um, the reason I was reflecting on this is that I started to notice throughout the year how my meditations, um, well, I would judge my meditations, obviously, because I'm a human and um, we tend to judge and that's what the ego does. The ego judges um, everything. Any chance it gets, the ego will judge. And so I would experience at the beginning of the year when I really got into it, I was always in a state of bliss in my meditations. I would achieve that state easily. Okay. And then, of course, naturally, um, life is like this. And so, you know, something would happen that would trigger me. And then I'd notice I'm struggling with my meditation. And then I would get over that difficult stage. And then I'd get back to a good place. And my meditations would be really good again. Really deep, really connected, really grounded, really calm, really peaceful. And today I noticed... Um, something interesting and that is that my meditation often serves as a feedback mechanism for me so at the beginning of the year when I really got into meditation and practicing it I was always in that state of bliss and I would I would sometimes sit down in my meditation and as soon as I closed my eyes within a minute I was in that state of bliss and I would stay in that state for a full hour and that was incredible and that was rare and it would last maybe three days and then I would struggle again with my meditation. My mind would be busy again. Things would be coming up and I'd have to sit down and sit and process it and it would be challenging. And today and yesterday, I think for the first time in a long time, I was able to tap into that state very quickly again. And I was reflecting on that because I was like, it's been a long time since I could sit down and not fight my mind. And I noticed <clears throat> that it's got to do with energy. I was listening to an Abraham Hicks podcast. And I think it was in this podcast where they said that whatever frequency you are holding in your body, whatever energetic frequency you are on in terms of feeling, you cannot manifest any other thought other than what is on that frequency. So if you're feeling guilt, shame, fear, the only thoughts that can come to your mind are thoughts of guilt, shame, and fear. Because thoughts are like thought forms. They're not even, thoughts aren't real. They're like the energy. Thoughts are energy. Feelings are energy. And if you're resonating at a certain frequency, your mental antenna can only pick up frequencies that resonate with that feeling that you are busy pinging out. Do you get it? So, I was reflecting on that today because I realized today specifically that I have been in a good place energetically so despite stress and despite negativity in my external environment I've been able to stay grounded and stay calm and stay aware for the past two days 
more often than not I've been in a good state and I noticed when I'm in a good state good state I sit down to meditate and I'm able to tap into that stillness a lot quicker I'm able to stay there sorry I just ate dinner and I'm able to then get downloads that are of a very high frequency because I am vibrationally in a high frequency and for the past few months like March, April, May, June it was a very blurry time for me in terms of my meditation because I started to notice my meditations kind of just I wasn't in a good place anymore with my meditations because I would sit down and it was because there was a lot going on in my life that I wasn't facing. There was um, decisions that I wasn't making that needed to be made. There was things that I was denying. And I think I knew that. Subconsciously, I knew that. And so automatically then I was in a lower frequency because I wasn't, I wasn't being authentic. I wasn't making the decisions I needed to make, even though I knew what I knew. So I was in a low vibration. I was in a lower state. <clears throat> and in that lower state, I would sit down to meditate every single day like I did before and my mind would fight me and I, I would have, you know, once in a while a good meditation that would ground me and bring me back and my meditation was always a positive tool but I couldn't tap into that stillness, I couldn't tap into that that state of coherence the way I do when I am in a good space and so I really noticed, I really really noticed that today how if I'm in a good place vibrationally, I'll sit down to meditate. My meditation will be easier. And if my meditation's easier, I get to tap into a different level of consciousness. And I can manifest from that position. Because you can't manifest and you can't... Well, you can. But it won't be the same. You can't tap into that, um, that higher state of awareness. And you can't, I suppose, tap into your subconscious mind and like program it. Is how Joe Dispenza would put it. You need to watch Rewired, it's excellent. He speaks about how if you sit down and you get into that meditation and you are able to quiet your analytical mind, if you are able to quiet your thinking mind and you are able to tap into that stillness, from that stillness you are conscious in your subconscious mind and you can literally program your mind like a computer to be whatever you want to be, to create whatever you want to create. <sighs> It's mind-blowing and it's beautiful and it's so exciting and everyone should meditate really but I just was reflecting on the energetics of the whole thing because I really didn't notice it until I was able to tap into that state a lot quicker and I'm so excited now actually for my meditations again because I've started to realize that meditation is always the thing that kind of brings me back but I get really excited when I'm able to tap into that stillness because then I'm just in a different space and I, I notice big, big shifts in my life happen. And the last time I felt like this was like January, I think, in terms of my meditation. And after January, there was a lot of good um, manifestations that came from it. And I was manifesting a lot at the time that ended up coming true. So... It's an exciting time for me, I think, um, because I can feel that something's coming. I, I just intuitively know that I felt a shift in the last week, two weeks, three weeks. I felt a shift in myself energetically. Like I feel different as a person. I feel like something has shifted energetically. And I've started to reflect on like the past six months and the six months before that. And the way I was feeling and the way things manifested afterwards, I'm, I'm always paying attention to the energy. And if I pay attention to the energy of the last six months, then I'm very excited for the next six months. Because ever since I started meditating, things in my life seem to be getting better and better and better. And so, again, um, I think the biggest thing about meditation is that it allows you to become coherent because when you are in that place of complete stillness like everything is aligned everything is aligned and you learn how to control your mind you learn how to well not control but you learn how to um basically just be more aware and 
how to quiet your mind and how to distinguish when it's your mind and when it's you. And I think that's been the biggest shift for me is starting to identify when is it my ego mind because then I can carry the skill of quieting my mind in meditation into my normal life. And then everything shifted, everything at work changed, everything got better, my relationships got better, everything got better in terms of being able to connect with others, being able to work better, being able to be more present, enjoy life more. So yeah, um, that's my reflection for today. My camera is going to cut me off because I'm at 15 minutes and it can only hold about 15 or 16 minutes. So I'm going to end my reflection there. I feel like there is a lot more I could talk about in terms of meditation and in terms of coherence. But I just wanted to touch on that. Um, yeah, let me know what you think and I'll see you tomorrow.